I'm going to show you how to use Flowed to build a flowchart that actually executes. Don't worry too much if you're not uh, understanding the, the actual program here. It's more about how to use Flowed and how to create a chart. So we'll start off by dragging in an input. You use an input block if you're doing challenges and the challenge is providing input data to you. Um, it, by default it will say input zero. If I create more input blocks it will automatically label the next one input one. Let's just work with one. If I like I can provide some test data here. So let's say uh, I want to provide a loop which executes five times. I'm going to input a test value of five. When the challenge runs later that will get overwritten by the, the data that the challenge supplies. Now we're going to drag in an operation block. This lets me type in an expression. So for instance we're going to create a variable counter equals zero. And now what I want to do is to output to the console window a bit of text. Let's drag this in here. We'll see what this does in a minute. And we're going to output the variable counter. Now I want to add one to my counter. So I'm going to drag in another operation block and say counter equals counter plus one. I can resize these if I want, so I could make it wider and narrower again. And now we're going to do a decision. So a decision, this is the second block here. So it's labeled condition in the top. And I'm now going to say, this is like an if statement. So if, here's our condition counter is less than, and I'm going to say input zero here. So whatever is provided by the input, our test data here is five. And when it's finished doing this particular loop, I would want to output. So I'm going to use the output block here. And I will output whatever is contained within, for instance, counter. And then finally, I'm going to end my program. OK, so we've got in the sort of raw materials. Now let's look at how we join lines together. So it's very easy. When you move your mouse over, you can see these little circles appear. If I hover over a circle, I can click and then drag and connect it to the next one. So I'll quickly connect up all of these. Now you'll notice um, that um, for the condition, a condition can actually have two output lines. One is for the condition that is true and the other one if it's false. So I'm going to drag here. Here you'll see a different way of dragging. Rather than dragging directly between these points, I can click and drag outwards and then when I let go of the mouse I can now move it upwards and click again and connect it to that point there. And you'll see this label, this line has been automatically labeled with true. So if this condition is true, it's going to come back here. Now when I connect these two, just make a bit more space, you can see it's labeled that line automatically as false. Uh, we'll connect these two together. Now if I wanted to swap these round, if I got the true and the false the wrong way around, I can just double click on the line and you can see it'll swap the true and the false around. I'll do it again. So now we've written our code. Um, what we might want to do is to tidy it up. You can see these things aren't quite aligned, so I can multi-select. I multi-select by pressing the shift key and then finding this top left point. Then with the shift key still pressed, I drag my mouse to the bottom right and let go. You can see all of these uh, blocks have been highlighted. I right click in one of them, align vertically, and now that's tidied our chart up a little bit. Now what we can do once we've built our chart is actually to run it. Uh, there are two ways of running. I can press this button here, which will just run it at full speed. And you can see it's gone all the way through. Or, and this is really very powerful, and you'll want to use this a lot when debugging your charts, I can press the button here, the step button. Now you can see it's actually stepping through our code line by line. If I want to, to fit all this in, I can obviously I can make my screen bigger or I can press the zoom button just to lower it to make it a little bit uh, smaller. And I can drag everything around. Um, so let's just step through our code. So first thing you'll notice is we have these two windows, the variables window and the console window. The console window is where output expressions get written. 
and the variables window automatically detects for us any variables that we've used. So input zero is the variable that comes that's given automatically for any inputs. Uh, here we've created our variable called counter and let's now just step through it. You can see here now counter is zero so it's initializing counter to zero. Now it's going to say counter equals counter plus one so it's now one and here's our condition if the counter is less than input zero input zero is five so if counter is less than five which it is it's going to go along this true line so let's see what happens here and you can see it comes back to the counter line and it will display it in here so this is the debug statement this just writes the expression that you've written inside here to the console window and you'll see if I wanted to I could actually modify this while it's still running so if I wanted to say for instance counter is this is also a valid expression and you can see it's modified it so if I stop and rerun the code you can see now it's displaying as something which is a little bit more easy to read anyway it goes round and round our loop and you can see now that counter is no longer less than input 0 which is 5 so it's because that condition is false it's coming down to here now here is an output statement that if you're writing charts to respond to challenges you'll use an output statement that's this one here which writes it to the console as you can see output 0 that's the very first output that's encountered the next one would be output 1 and the one after that output 2 and so on and it's output the value 5 and here's the final statement so it's going to hit end and then it'll say program finished so if I wanted to show and hide this console at any time I can click this icon here allows us a bit more room to inspect our chart uh, as I mentioned before if I want to zoom in and out I can use these buttons here or I can use my mouse wheel and if I happen to have panned off the chart so as I can click and drag to move my chart around if it's moved out of sight and I can't find it anymore the simplest thing to do is to press this center button here which finds and blows it up to the maximum size that will fit within your window if you look in your Codeo dashboard and in modules you'll find a number of uh, modules and units on how to use Flowed and it teaches you the basics of programming using flowcharting and covers topics such as uh, string, number expressions, loops, conditional statements, arrays and a lot more.